Hello and welcome to the Loss Prevention News Network. Today we're with the Loss Prevention Leaders of the National Retail Federation, Gary Johnson, the current chairperson for the LP Advisory Council, Rich Miller, the Vice President of Loss Prevention for the NRF, and Joe LaRocca, the Senior Advisor for the NRF. Today, we'd like to ask you some questions, gentlemen. Rich, how about you? Um, can you talk about today's, this week's Retail Big Show and, and give us an idea about what's going on, what's happening, and where it's going, so to speak? Sure. Well, they call it the Big Show for a good reason. Uh, over 22,000 attendees will be here. Uh, they're coming to listen and hear from experts in the industry uh, to hear about the new ideas and innovation, innovative ways to deal with uh, today's problems in retail. Um, from the standpoint that we have um, over 80 countries represented here, and literally every aspect of retailing is represented here. Our loss prevention uh, initiative for the conference is uh, all geared around emerging technology. We're going to have a workshop um, and also a session that will work on those issues Individuals from the LB community are coming here to work on them together, talk about some of the ideas uh, to deal with today's issues centering around the loss prevention uh, teams and what they're dealing with from an emerging technology standpoint. Now, is this the first time the NRF has done an emerging technology session at, at, the, at the big show? I believe it is uh, the first time that we're, we're tackling at the big show. Mm -hmm. We've had some conversation at the loss prevention conferences in the past and will in the future. Mm -hmm. And is this going to happen again it, 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 with, in relation to the big show? Or are you going to continue with the emerging technology session? Well, the emerging technology is advancing as fast as we can possibly talk about it. As we're speaking mm -hmm. here, things are changing. Uh, so I envision going forward, both at the big show as well as the LP conference, the same kind of menu of um, sessions, perhaps even workshops, going forward. Can you talk about any of the sessions specifically tomorrow with the emerging technologies? Yes. That you're addressing? Sure. sure. Uh, the emerging technology workshop is a gathering of about 50 to 60 LP uh, leaders. Um, that session is going to be facilitated by Joe LaRocca from the NRF and uh, that session will be geared towards mobile technology, um, touchless payments, e-receipts, and things like that. Mm -hmm. and, and let's move over to the loss prevention conference itself, the, the uh, one that is held every June by the NRF. Uh, can you give us uh, some history about the loss prevention show in, in the success that it's been in the industry? Sure. Um, myself, I've attended over 25 years of loss prevention conferences with the NRF. Uh, I've been involved in helping to plan those for over 20 years on the advisory council. It's simply the best place to go, learn from your peers, industry experts, um, solution providers, as well as law enforcement representatives from the federal, state, and local um, law enforcement. Um, it's a perfect place to uh, learn new technology uh, and where that's going and what solutions to look for. How many folks attend the, the show each year? Um, the number is steadily growing over the years and is approximately 3,000 attendees from mm -hmm. the loss prevention community. And if, if you look at the percentage breakdown of the sessions, I mean, how many of them are dealing with technology versus the traditional loss prevention educational series? For 2012, our conference will table about 30% of the sessions will be on emerging technology as well as fraud uh, prevention programs. That's fantastic. And, and how would one go about if they were interested in attending and possibly not a member? And how would they go about contacting, uh, just visiting you the website? There are yes, there are various ways. Uh, first of all, reaching out to fellow members in the community, they can get a lot of information from that. Mm -hmm. But the NRF website is certainly the place to go. Look at the preliminary schedule for the conference, and as time progresses, there'll be more and more information available to them on that mm -hmm. website. 
You know, if you're a first time attendee, how do you go about selecting the sessions? You know, and, and if you're a vendor, you know, should they go to sessions? And, and what happens if they miss one? Well, a couple of things. Uh, first of all, get being prepared when you arrive at the conference on the sessions you're interested in is very important to have a schedule because mm -hmm. things move fast and there isn't much time in between the sessions to stand and make up your mind. So you have to be prepared. You have to have an agenda. The uh, vendor community now is permitted to attend the sessions. Uh, so they, they've become an integral part mm -hmm. of the feedback that we get after the sessions are completed. And if in fact uh, they do not get to attend a session that they would like to have been, then there are availability of audio tapes, uh, session recaps, uh, slide presentations that they can uh, avail themselves off of the website once mm -hmm. again. What about the committee behind it? I mean, I understand that there's a rather large uh, effort that goes behind, behind planning it and pulling it off and managing it and orchestrating it. Can you give us a feel for the committee, the, the actual loss prevention community members that participate and in, in, in help the NRF pull this off each year? The committee, the main body uh, oversight over all of the committees uh, within our LP group is the Loss Prevention Advisory Council. That's made up of approximately 30 seasoned leaders in the industry. Cross-section of every type of retailer is represented around the table. A smaller group, uh, the conference planning um, committee, is made up of a handful of advisory council members along with a number of selected individuals from the industry who are not part of the council and, not, uh, and who have volunteered to participate on the committee. They are attendees of the conference from the past years. They help us put together in a very thoughtful way what's been what's been a good session to repeat how it should change what that should look like the dynamics of having a panel discussion versus an interactive session uh, or a straightforward lecture mm -hmm. so they're very helpful in helping us put um, some perspective around that from an attendees standpoint so if if, if you're not on the advisory council I mean, how would a senior or, or a middle manager loss prevention executive get involved in this, uh, uh, in, in helping, you know, if their retailer is a member of the NRF? Well, specifically at the conference, we always make a point of passing the word down at the conference that we are looking for participation from the community mm -hmm. and people who attend the conference certainly have a good perspective on what they like and what they dislike. So we make a point of making those announcements throughout the conference and informally the Loss Prevention Advisory Council as well as the Planning Committee. They're engaged in conversation throughout the conference to see if we can't recruit new members uh, who are, and in many cases, we're looking for first-time attendees mm -hmm. to tap for opinions. And you also put an invite out to the whole industry for speakers as well periodically throughout the year if I'm not mistaken, correct? Yes, we do. Mm -hmm. uh, that's an ongoing process. The conference planning uh, begins for the next year almost as quickly as we wrap up uh, the one conference. Yeah, because it so, takes so long to put one together. Yes, certainly. and to determine the sessions as uh, we see fit at the end of that conference. But throughout the year, uh, some of the priorities change as we just talked about the emerging technology. Uh, that's changing quickly. Mm -hmm. So some things that we talk about perhaps six months after our conference uh, are going to change two months before we have the next conference. So it's a challenge and we look to those members of the committee to help us um, identify what we should be talking about. Mm -hmm. Well Gary, as the chairperson for the LP Advisory Council, could you talk to us about your objectives and your goals over the next couple of years and in your uh, position is for a two-year period correct that's correct uh, I started my uh, term in June mm -hmm. and really my uh, the objectives of the committee are really going to follow along with the questions you're asking in terms of uh, involvement and participation the LP community has really shown itself to be one that wants to be involved wants to participate 
And so from an advisory council standpoint, we're really going to work on those committees that we can get some traction and get some headway on. Um, there's opportunity for people to get involved in committee work. Uh, they can participate in our regional investigator network meetings. There's development programs sponsored by our Women in LP Caucus. So throughout the year, there's plenty of opportunity for people to get involved. And that's one of the main objectives and kind of the, the energetic piece I want to bring to the table and make sure that those avenues are there for people. Uh, we recently had a meeting in uh, Washington and all of the uh, chairmen um, were there for the committees and we really talked about how do we look at different avenues of inclusion to involve people, look at different uh, avenues, perhaps like webinars, things of that nature, so that we can get more folks involved. So if I were to sum it up in, in really one term, it would be involvement. That's the objective. And that's your goal for the next two years? Yes. You know, you've been involved in the NRF for well over 20 years, you know, and, and obviously you've grown, you've learned, it's been a great experience for you. Could you talk to us about, you know, what that has meant to you? The NRF, the, the 20 years you've been involved, in, in what value that's added to you, yourself, as an executive, and to the retailer that you've worked for? Sure. Really, the largest thing I've gotten out of my affiliation with the NRF is really networking. So it, no matter what phase of your career you're at, if you're a new person, if you've been in the business for a while, I've really learned that you can't underestimate the value that networking brings to the table. I have a, uh, a database full of names that I can call on a moment's notice if I need help, if I have a problem, and again, the LP community really um, reaches out and embraces that kind of you know, shared spirit. So that's probably the biggest takeaway that I would tell you that keeps me coming back to the NRF. 